Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hey, I've had this DW15S switch for a while and it works really well. Just the last couple of days though, I started having a weird problem where I can't control it through the front panel switch. I can't control it through the app. It's not coming on and off properly. So there's something wrong with it and I'm gonna dig right into it. Take a look, see what you think. Let's start out with some electrical basics. Let's turn off that circuit breaker, make sure everything's safe to work on, and then we can move on with the rest of the project. Next thing you want to do is get it out of the wall socket. And I've kind of highlighted a few things here. Uh, you've got your four wires that are going to come in on a basic installation. And uh, go ahead and take a picture just to make sure you know where those wires go back. Uh, that way you don't have to guess. All right. So the next step is to remove the four small screws on the back of this module. So you're going to have four screws uh, on the back, pull them out. And the next step is to go ahead and uh, pull this tab or push in on that tab is what I should say. Uh, there's a tab on each side of the case and that'll take the clamshell and allow you to uh, get it apart. You can see the circuitry inside there um, as you pull that thing apart. Moving along. Go ahead and pull it apart and you'll be able to lift out the whole module. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, this is the back here, uh, down on the bottom. This is the, uh, I don't know, the, <laughs> the metal plate that screws to the wall. This then set, sets down in there. You can see this is made up of two circuit boards. You've got a nice little ribbon cable here. And these are the two uh, capacitors that we're going to talk about later on in the video. Um, this is the top here and whoops, make that the top. And this, this is the actual button uh, that you're going to actually press. So that all kind of goes together. Um, the tops, those two little tabs I was talking about are right here and here. Um, that lets you pull this whole thing apart. All right, so next thing, I watched another video and this gave me an idea that we probably do have some capacitors in these that tend to go bad. Uh, I noticed the caps used in this were not of high quality. Um, they sit in this location and this location on the circuit board. And if we take a look back here, that's the two locations right here and here that uh, those cap capacitors are actually in. Take note that they have a plus sign. Of course, this would be the negative uh, side. This one's a little harder to see, but there's the little plus right there, and then this would be minus over on the other side. Um, all right, so these are the two capacitors. They're low voltage caps. These are 10 volts. They probably run at five volts. The first one is 330 microfarads. The second one is 220 microfarads. In this case, it was this cap that was bad. Uh, I show right here on my ESR meter that 220 volt 10, excuse me, 220 microfarad 10 volt cap is measuring in at uh, 97 microfarads and an ESR of 11 ohms. That that's not good right there. So. So you know right away that this is a bad cap. It's not only getting a, a bad microfarad reading, but your um, effective resistance is uh, pretty high for that thing. So um, even though this capacitor measured as good, I went ahead and replaced both of them. These are not good quality capacitors. Uh, caps, just like batteries, can go bad over time, especially the really cheap ones. So I just pulled both of these out. I did check the other high voltage capacitors in this um, device. Uh, and if you go back here, you can see those over here. Uh, those are high voltage capacitors, and I left those alone. They seem to be just fine. All right, so if you're interested in buying a little ESR meter like this, 
uh, for capacitors. This thing will test capacitors, transistors, even um, inductors to a certain degree, uh, resistors, and so on. Um, you can get it on Amazon for like 25 bucks, I think is what I paid for this, and it really works very well. Um, so just do a search for B-Side ESR02 Pro, and it'll come right up on Amazon. You should have some options to look at there. All right, so the next step is go ahead and replace those two caps. Now this is where you need to really pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, you can put these in backwards, and while they may not fail, Right away, the circuit probably won't work at all if they're in reverse, so pay attention. You'll see here on both of these capacitors, they both have a stripe and a minus sign on one side of the capacitor. That is your negative. Okay, so those negative leads would then go to the negative hole on the circuit board. Because this is not negative, this would then go to the positive connection on the circuit board. So if you're familiar with caps, this is kind of a no-brainer. If you're not familiar with capacitors, uh, it's very important to get this correct because they could potentially catch on fire. Um, more likely, they'll just kind of fizzle, leak, and make a massive mess. And your circuits won't be working either. So pay attention to that polarity on that capacitor uh, and you'll be in good shape. All right, so at this point, you can reassemble it. It's pretty easy to get back together. Put it back in the wall and give it a good test. Um, go ahead and put your circuit breaker back on, power it up, give it a test. Mine worked right away, right out of the box. And hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. Fine. If you wanna touch my piece, use caution. Call like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the let out the let out the wake up, get out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. You take the